the cheetah, the world's fastest land animal. Despite being one of the most notorious predators, their incredible speed also presents a major challenge. Cheetahs are able to maintain their top speed of 110 kilometers an hour for just 17 seconds. If they run for any longer, their body temperature can reach a brain-frying degree of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which can cause them to collapse or even die. So, if cheetahs can only maintain top speed for 17 seconds, how close do they have to sneak up to a gazelle to have a shot at catching it? So before we attempt this problem, we have to make a few assumptions. The first assumption we make is that the cheetah and gazelle start from rest and accelerate both at the same time. The second assumption we make is that all rates of acceleration are constant. The third is that this chase takes place in a one-dimensional system, meaning that both animals run in a straight line. Now to approach this problem, I'm going to simplify it down for you to three steps. One, we find the time it takes for both animals to reach top speed and the time for both the cheetah and gazelle to maintain this top speed. Two, we find the total distance each animal travels. Three, we use both distances to find the maximum distance the gazelle can be away from the cheetah and still get caught. Now, before we attempt to solve this problem mathematically, we're going to draw a picture. Let's say that the cheetah starts right here. We're going to call this point A. Likewise, the gazelle starts a certain distance away from the cheetah. Let's say right here. We're going to call that point C. Now the cheetah accelerates for a given distance and a given period of time. That distance we're going to call the distance between point A and point B. Likewise, the gazelle only accelerates for a certain distance before reaching top speed. We're going to call that distance the distance between point C and point D. What we're about to solve is the maximum distance the cheetah and gazelle can be away from each other in order for the gazelle to still get caught. That distance is the distance between point A and point C. Now what do we know? Well, we know that both animals start at rest, which means that their initial velocities are both zero meters per second. We know that a cheetah's maximum velocity when running at full sprint is 110 kilometers per hour or 30.6 meters per second. We know that a gazelle's maximum velocity when running at full sprint is 70 kilometers per hour or 19.4 meters per second. We know that a cheetah can accelerate at 8.9 meters per second, and we know that a gazelle can accelerate at 4.5 meters per second. And lastly, this being the most important piece of the puzzle, we know that the maximum distance a cheetah can maintain maximum velocity for is only 400 meters. This is because they can only run at top speed for about 17 seconds before their body overheats, which could cause them to pass out or even fry their brain. Now, the gazelle's maximum distance that it can run at top speed is not applicable here because a gazelle's distance that it can run at top speed is much longer than the cheetah's. Now, next we need to figure out how long the cheetah actually spends running. In order to do that, we need to figure out how long it takes for it to reach top speed, and we also need to figure out, assuming the cheetah can only run at top speed for 400 meters, how long it spends at top speed. In order to do that, we need to first look at the, spent, the time spent accelerating. We know that the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the acceleration will give us 3.4 seconds, which is the amount of time the cheetah spends accelerating. We need to also then look at the amount of time the cheetah runs at top speed, which is 13.1 seconds. Together, they give us 16.5 seconds, which is the total time it takes for the cheetah to move from point A to point E. Next, we need to find the total distance the cheetah runs for. In order to do that, we need to look at the amount of distance it covers while accelerating. In order to do this, we look at the velocity squared over two times the acceleration. In the case of the cheetah, this gives us, gives us 52.6 meters. We already know how long the cheetah runs for when it's at top speed, which is 400 meters. When we add 52.6 to that, we get 452.6 meters, which is the total distance traveled from the cheetah from point A to point E. We need to find the time it takes for the gazelle to reach top speed. Using the same equation we used previously for the cheetah, this gives us 4.3 seconds. We know that the time it takes for the cheetah to go from A to E 
is 16.5 seconds. And since both animals start at the same time, we subtract the amount of time it takes for the gazelle to go from point C to E by 4.3 seconds. This gives us 12.2 seconds. Almost done. We now know the time and distance the cheetah spends running and the time the gazelle spends running. The last piece of the puzzle is to find the distance the gazelle runs. The gazelle takes 41.8 meters to reach top speed and then travels at top speed for another 236.7 meters. Add them together and we know that the total distance the gazelle travels is 278.5 meters. Summing it up, the cheetah traveled a total distance of 452.5 meters. The gazelle traveled a total of 278.7 meters. To find the distance between A and C, subtract the distance the gazelle traveled by the distance the cheetah traveled, and that gives you 174 meters, which is the maximum distance the gazelle can be away from the cheetah for the cheetah to still be guaranteed to catch it. As nice as the 1D model is, we all know that it's not how it actually works in real life. Gazelles have evolved to have an advantage over cheetahs when it comes to their ability to change direction. This is a robotic simulation demonstrating the effects of momentum when a cheetah turns without a tail. However, when a tail is introduced as a counterweight, turning becomes much more stable because of the rotational inertia of the tail. The torque provided by the tail keeps the object upright. Cheetahs have evolved to develop a mechanism that counters the gazelle's ability to change direction quickly. A cheetah's tail is three quarters the length of its body. As the cheetah changes direction in full sprint, the tail acts as a counterweight which exerts torque on the cheetah's body in the opposite direction that momentum would have otherwise carried it. Without its tail, cheetahs would fall over as they turn, just like the robot did. However, with the tail, they are able to remain upright. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for listening.